Yeah, I don't know. Uh, thank you to uh, Unreliable MC for rejoining the channel members. That's another. That's a cool thing, having more people hopping back up on the channel membership. Oh, yeah, and also you get your name in the in the looping crawl on screen where you see all the names in the corner. Uh, you'd get that if you become a channel member, so that would be effective next week if you signed up now. So that's also kind of cool. So I plugged stuff. We had fun with that. And uh, I guess we should get started with this fella. I'm going to make sure the volume's on for him. Um, and we're going to be doing... I... <laughs> okay, so I'm a little bit insecure about saying this. Bosnia, which I know how to pronounce, probably, unless I said that wrong. And Herzegovina. Herzegovina. That one always gets me. <laughs> I, I could say Bosnia. I, I want to hear how, how he says it. So let's get started with some geography now. We're probably going to be doing two of these. You thought Belgium was confusing? Brother, please, if you want complication men addicts, come to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Herzegovina. It's he says it so geography. fast. Hey everybody, I'm your host Paul Barbato. If you're ever on a game show and there's a million dollar question... Why, why, are, why are we all already saying like, uh, oh no? Why are we all already nervous? Is there something I don't know uh, going into this one? I'm just saying, chat seems nervous. Chances are, this country will be on that million dollar question. So pay attention, you might win some money. That's a weird flag. Bosnia and Herzegovina have what seems like a very simple flag, but there's a lot hidden underneath it. First of all, the flag has a blue field with a yellow triangle and seven full stars and two half stars at the top and bottom of the hypotenuse of the... So this, uh, this flag implies like kind of a loop, which is weird. I don't know what's up with that. Triangle. The triangle represents the three constituent peoples of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Bosnians, Serbs, and Croats. It also respectively represents the map of Bosnia, which kind of looks like a triangle. The stars represent Europe and are meant to go okay. on forever, hence the half stars at the bottom and the top. Some say the flag was even partially adapted from the European Union flag. The colors white and blue and yellow are now? traditionally seen as Thank colors you. representing peace. I'll now let's find that. out how peaceful this country is, shall we? <laughs> Remember Belgium and how confusing that whole Flanders Wallonia thing was? Well, get ready yeah. because we're going to conquer one place with two regions, two entities, and a weird third semi rogue autonomous region district. Just fair warning, you might have a seizure trying to understand all of this stuff. So if your brain's not that strong, just fast forward to the physical geography part. Mine's not very strong, but we're going to try. For you to look at. First of all, Bosnia and Herzegovina is located in that lovely area of mass control. Yeah, I don't know about the flag either. It, it is very strange. If I were still doing flag review, I'd probably, uh, I'd probably give it like a medium low grade because there's something design wise about it that kind of bugs me. It is unique though, and I, I, I would give it points for being uh, unique. It, it's definitely interesting to look at. And you can be good, you can be bad, just don't be boring. And I don't think that flag's boring to me confusion in South Europe known as the Balkans, located to the south of Croatia, west of Serbia, and north of Montenegro. You would think that Bosnia and Herzegovina is landlocked, but if you look very close, you'll notice they have the smallest little panhandle that touches the Adriatic Sea for only cool. about 25 kilometers or about 15 miles. Now, here's where things get tricky. When you hear the name Bosnia and Herzegovina, you would think it kind of sounds like two separate nationalistic entities, kind of like the UK or the United Arab Emirates, but that's not really the case. So first of all, what exactly is Bosnia and what exactly is Herzegovina? Well, in the shortest, simplest way I can put it, they're just regions. Although the borders are vague and not clearly defined, Bosnia is generally located in this area and Herzegovina is generally located in the south in this area. Culturally, the people of Bosnia are the same as the people in Herzegovina, except there are more ethnic Croats living in the south by Herzegovina, especially on the border of Croatia. The only reason why it's separate is because some guy in the 1400s created his own country. He had the title of Herzog, which is where the name Herzegovina comes from. But other than that, that's it's, it's just the same country. Now, here's where things do get divided, though. Bosnia and Herzegovina is kind of divided into two separate entities, each one with about half mm. the land of the country that serve the three different people groups known as the constituent peoples, a unique term that only applies to Bosnia and Herzegovina. We'll explain more about this in the demographics. That sounds... Essentially, Bosnia and Herzegovina... That sounds very difficult to balance there. So it's two divi It's divided into two portions for three groups of people. And now I just need, once we get to the people, I need to know how they're distributed. And that's 
probably gonna really lay out how complex this is. Hey, airplane's going overhead. Thank you. I mean, it's been like four hours. I guess I can't get mad. Herzegovina is divided into the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republika Srpska. I know, it looks like it's pronounced Srpska. It's pronounced Srpska. Triple dip thongs are an Needs more vowels, man. Most of the ethnic Serbs live in the Republika Srpska and each side has its own capital. Sarajevo for the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Banja Luka for the Republic of Srpska. However, Sarajevo acts as the national capital for the entire country as well. Furthermore, the Republika Srpska is split into two regions and then they are both divided into cantons, or counties, and municipalities. Ten for the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and seven for the Republic of Srpska. Keep in mind, Bosnia and Herzegovina has two small municipal exclaves on the Sava River on the border of Croatia, known as the Posavina Canton County. These belong to the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and make the smallest cantons. Then you have the weird Brčko district. I know, it looks like Brčko. Needs more vowels. Brčko. That was a quadruple diphthong. Gotta love these Slavic words. This place is kind of seen as like a neutral ground and kind of belongs to both entities and it kind of governs itself. All of this was done to kind of alleviate the demographical tensions in the country after the Yugoslav Wars in the 90s. However, the yeah. strategy behind it has sense. always been kind of shaky in its foundations. Speaking of war, this place has a lot of lingering reminders of its brutal past. Like in Sarajevo, there's a tunnel museum and the Sarajevo roses, which are mortar blasts in the sidewalk that were filled up with pink concrete. They do have a a little small sense of humor though. They made an ironic iCar canned beef monument dedicated to the longest airlift raid attempt in history for nearly three years in which humanitarian airlifts from all over Europe and especially in the UK would drop off food supplies that were often expired leftovers from previous wars that nobody wanted to eat. Many times the food I mean pork that if you can make the use out of the country it, had to abstain from might. eating so it was useless to them. It was oh, literally then, the mind. world's most sarcastic monument ever. Now if you thought Bosnia and Herzegovina was pretty quirky with their land borders then you'll notice that the actual land has a lot more tricks and gimmicks. First of all, the country is mostly mountainous or hilly as it lies on the Dinaric Alps in the Balkan Peninsula with flatter lands in the northeast by the Pannonian Basin. About half of the country is forested and about 30% of the land is arable, mostly in the northeast regions, whereas the south, no. mostly in Herzegovina, is more rocky and dry than the rest of the country. Now, this is where things get a little interesting. Yes, Not a bad the country ratio, does have though. a lot of potential arable land, but the problem is, due to its war past, the country still has about 200,000 landmines that they have to clear from the ground. But I mean, hey, that's only like a third of the Mount from Albania, remember? Woohoo! Slightly less danger! Then, in the Republika Srpska, you can find the last jungle or primeval forest in southern Europe. The Perucica Forest, which is only accessible to explore in the company of rangers. The world's tallest Norwegian spruce tree can be found here, and many captivating waterfalls and ancient trees that take you back years in the past. Now, here's the funny thing. Many people in Bosnia, around Sarajevo, will tell you that they're pretty certain that the country has the world's largest man-made ancient pyramid. Located near the town of Bisoko, the hills in the region seem to have an almost perfect oh. geometric shape that creepishly resembles a pyramid with almost equal sides and angles. Modern archaeologists are skeptical, but if you look at the pictures from above, I mean, it does kind of look like a pyramid. I don't know, you be the judge. Also so, is the dispute whether or not it's actually man-made or if it was naturally done like that? Like, yeah, it does look like a pyramid, but... I, I'm, I'm confused about the nature of the dispute. So thanks to its mountainous terrain, Bosnia and Herzegovina was selected and hosted the 1984 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo. However, since then, the entire area, including the bobsledding trail, is all but completely abandoned and tagged with graffiti. It's actually kind of a popular tourist spot these days. <laughs> Bosnia and Herzegovina just doesn't stop when it comes to the strange atmosphere, but the people here are even more complex. <laughs> Here's the rule with Bosnia and Herzegovina. You always have to constantly think in threes. Never refer to everybody in the country as just Bosnians. Half of everybody will get super mad at you. I, First I was, of all, the country has about- I was actually getting nervous about that because I didn't want to say Herzegovina because I didn't know how to say it. And I wanted to just say, we're doing the Bosnia uh, episode. And I was just thinking like, what if that's like alienating an entire group of people or something? Because like, you always- to a certain degree, should be on eggshells when it comes to potentially alienating massive groups of people. 
I, I think that's fair to be a little bit nervous about. About 4 million people, about 48% of whom are Bosnians, 33% Serbs, and 15% Croats, with the remaining 4% from other nations. The three main people groups of this country are pretty much what make it function in such a weird way. Now, here's the funny thing. Bosnians, Croatians, Serbians, and even Montenegrins can all pretty much understand each other with their languages. Their languages are all pretty much the same Slavic-based dialect with a few differential nuances. The only difference is that typically Serbian is written with the Cyrillic alphabet, and Bosnian Bosnian and Croatian is written with a Latin-based alphabet. However, they will okay. fiercely tell you that the languages are separate and distinct languages, Croatian, Serbian, and Bosnian. They even put warning signs in all three languages on cigarette packs. So essentially, it's like this. Hi, I'm speaking American. Hello, I'm speaking British. Hi, I'm speaking Irish. You know, you guys all pretty much understand each other and you're all kind of like saying the same thing. Aren't you all speaking the same? No! Now here's where things get <laughs> really confusing. Bosnia and Herzegovina has a bicameral legislature that includes a three-member presidency. One for each of the people groups. The Serbs, the Croatians, and the Bosnians. That's right, a, the country has three presidents. You don't see anything like this anywhere else in the world. However, the state government is highly decentralized and a lot of the legislation just goes to the respective entities. Culturally, this place sticks out. as a former part of the Ottoman Empire, Islam spread to the nation, and today is still part of the religious majority. Muslims make up mm. about 45% of the population, most of whom are non-denominational Muslim, about 36% are Serb Orthodox Christian, 15% Catholic, mostly from the Croats. It's kind of So the Muslims aren't the majority, they're the plurality. Not quite the majority yet. Strange, because Bosnia is one of the few places in the world where you can find the whitest Muslims you will ever see in your life. It's funny though, because for a long time, Bosnia and Herzegovina was also under the Austro-Hungarian Empire, so you kind of get this weird European-Muslim-Eastern mix in terms of culture. It's also kind of known as the place where World War I started. Remember Archduke that Franz Ferdinand? Yeah, that's kind of how the country interacts with itself. Now, how does it interact with the outsiders? Now, this is where things get very politically divided. That's like one of the only things I knew about, uh, uh, about, uh, just Bosnia in general. Um, the, the World War One thing. I, I, I couldn't, I really couldn't tell you, before this video, I couldn't have told you much more about it. There's also a, a pretty good song called Sarajevo by George Watsky. But I don't think that taught me anything about Sarajevo. But it's 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 a slap. Divisive because the country has a very deep history in alliances and enemies. Without getting into too much detail, essentially in the 90s, the country was in a straight up war internally and it was basically against all three people groups. After the war ended and the Dayton Agreement was signed, the country cooled off, kind of, and the people agreed to calm down a bit and stop killing kind each of. other and make a new country that had a full sovereign status as one, but with divided regions that were somewhat segregated. Did you get that? This was the best they could do. And I mean, honestly, with a country with that much internal animal, it worked kind of well. It's like, look, we all hate each other and we still do, but things have gotten a little too crazy. So let's just agree to stop all the chaos and hate each other in a distant yet constructive way so that our country can still make money and not get ridiculed by everyone else outside. Deal? Deal. In terms of outside that sounds reasonable. Friends, Bulgaria was the first country to recognize Bosnia and Herzegovina's sovereignty and immediately stepped in with bilateral relations. Geographically, that makes sense. They would today. Be first. Surprisingly, Malaysia is also a huge supporter of the country and during the war became the only country in Asia to accept Bosnian refugees. To this day, many Bosnian students study abroad and live in Malaysia. Now, when <clears> it comes <throat> to best friends, it really depends on who you ask in the country. Of course, the Croats will tell you Croatia, the Bosnians will most likely say Turkey, and the Serbs will say Serbia. In a weird way though, the division of peoples kind of inadvertently increases the diplomatic relations that the country as a whole has access to. For example, Bosnians may not like the Russians, but the Serbs in Bosnia and Herzegovina do. Therefore, the country as a whole benefits from the relations that one people group engage in, regardless of how the second feels. Isn't that weird? Oh, it's like, the friend of my enemy Dangerous. is by default my friend too. Welcome to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. Many oh, Bosnians man. have actually tried to contend for a unified central government all under one legislation. However, the Republic of Srpska is fiercely opposed to this. They only kind of reluctantly agree to be under Bosnia and Herzegovina sovereignty just by a few strands of hair. And they've even threatened that if Kosovo gains complete independence, they will have no problem annexing themselves back to Serbia, which would make Serbia look like this. In conclusion, Bosnia and Herzegovina is like the Belgium of the Balkans, but with stranger conflicts, quieter controlled anger, slightly dysfunctional politics, but with a pinch of sarcasm and dry humor that gives the country its spicy appeal. Stay tuned, Botswana is coming up next. Oh, that sounds like a, that, that sounds pretty cool. Um, 
Is that the next thing I have in my playlist? It is. We will do that one next. Bosnia is like very basically the most divided and war-torn remnant of Yugoslavia. Yeah, and it's so weird how little I know about it because I straight up did a paper on Yugoslavia. <laughs> uh, this is when I first got to my current school. So, you know, that was a while ago. And I don't remember anything about that paper. It was about globalization or something. I'm sure it was awful because I, I didn't try at the time. Now I try significantly more than I once did. I've, uh, oh, I got to get to working on my paper. I should be doing that pretty soon. So I got to wrap up the stream pretty soon. So we're going to do Botswana now. And then I'm going to go into wrapping up the stream because I don't have uh, a lot more time to get that paper done. So I got to I got to get back to work. All right. Botswana. Let's go. Bling, bling. Welcome to Diamond Town, Africa. Oh, that's what we're doing. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Paul Barbato. If there was ever an African comeback kid, Botswana Bobby. would definitely fit that title. But first, you know the drill. Let's dissect the flag. That's how we would say it in Rhode Island, where I'm from, because we drop our R's. So his, his nickname would be Bobby. Oh, you crapped on my hand. Isn't that nice of you, you little bird? Little rascal. He literally crapped on my thumb. Um, that's not fun. Flag. I, I really like this flag. It's simple, but I... The flag is pretty simple. It has a blue field cut horizontally by a black stripe with a white frame. The blue represents water, or more specifically rain, as it is a precious resource the country relies on and sustains life of the country. The black and white frame also has two meanings. The first one being that Botswana is a country of diverse cooperation between people of different races that work in harmony, and the second that it represents the stripes of a zebra. Easy. Yeah. Moving on. For, for such a simple flag, you don't see the use of like this shade of blue super often in flags so when you do see it it stands out big time i love uh the contrast with the black and like the white border i just think it flows so perfectly it's just, it's just a perfect simple flag you're gonna do a simple flag Th this one's good second that it represents the stripes of a zebra easy moving on <laughs> Botswana's location is kind of serendipitous in that for the longest time, they didn't even realize that they were sitting on buried treasure. First of all, Botswana is located in the southern area of the African continent, about the same size as France, and is bordered by four other countries. Looking at the map, you would think Botswana That's is only landlocked. bordered by Namibia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. So the water thing probably is more significant to them because they don't have access to... Well, oceans provide a different thing from like rainwater, but you know, it... it it probably has a significant meaning to a landlocked country. Uh, the significance of water is just different, the appreciation for it. I don't know, that, that's what I've noticed at least. Uh, that might not be the best observation. But if you look very close at the northeastern tip where the Chobe River meets the Zambezi, you see the Zambezi Quadrapoint in which all four countries meet. This spot has the ever so narrowest of borders only a few dozen meters wide that Botswana has with Zambia on the Zambezi River. This area is right on the A33 road that takes you to the Kazungula Ferry, the only place in all of Botswana that gives you access to Zambia directly from Botswana. This is also the only part of Botswana that touches the world famous Zambezi River which has been historically used for centuries for navigating across the African savannas. It's kind of funny though, because when drawing the borders, they probably could have taken more, but Namibia was like, oh, hell no, I'm gonna go get me some of that Zambezi, y'all. Look at me, I got this dry skeleton coast. I <laughs> need my hydrations. Botswana's oh. capital and largest city is Gaborone. If you speak Setswana, it's pronounced Gaborone, located close to the border of South Africa, and the country is divided into nine districts. With the exception of Namibia's straight and quite frankly, very distinct and noticeably well-marked border with Botswana, the Caprivi Strip, most of the borders... Um, that looks like a conflict. I don't know. That, that looks like that had to be drawn uh, as the result of something. I, I, I don't know. I, when I see straight borders, I'm like, okay, that wasn't naturally settled that way. That was a treaty. 
specifically very distinct and noticeably well-marked border with Botswana, the Caprivi Strip, most of the borders are rivers, like the Chobe, Limpopo, the Shashe, which by the way, in the very east, Zimbabwe was like, look, I know we're using this river as a border, but I'm just gonna draw a radius around the station of Thule, and everything in that circle is mine to use as a wildlife reserve, even if it does cross the river. Oh, 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 okay, a wildlife reserve. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah okay, you can have it, Zimbabwe. Otherwise, Botswana is pretty open and free, as the third Cowards. most densely populated Don't back country down. in Africa, it's a haven for nature and safari enthusiasts. Ooh, good opportunity to transition. Botswana doesn't just have a bunch of open land, but also a bunch of exceptionally unique land unlike anywhere else in Africa. First off, the country is generally flat, and about 70% of the country is dominated by the semi-arid Kalahari Desert and dry savannas, especially in the west part of the country, whereas the east and the north parts are generally greener. In the far north and the northwest district, you have one of the strangest natural phenomena, the Okavango Delta. Now, if you've heard of this place, contrary to what you may have been told, this is not actually the world's largest inland delta. There are two others that pass it in Mali, and Sudan. However, this world-renowned UNESCO heritage site sticks out because of the way how the delta operates. Basically, the Okavango River meanders into geological faults that, in response, spread the waters out into a vast network of channels, creeks, and wetlands. Now, here's the thing. Mm. Every year, rainwater from the highlands of Angola come down and surge into the Okavango, causing the entire flood basin to swell up to three times its permanent size between March and June. Namibia used to belong to German, the German Empire, so yeah, the border is from the scramble for Africa. There, there we go. Uh, colonialism. It's always there. For the next few Never months, the away. entire area becomes this weird, shallow, swampy wetland with an abundance of wildlife that flourishes in it. In fact, one of the strangest things about this area is that it is one of the few places where you will find animals that, contrary to their cousins in the other areas, have completely adapted to the hydrated landscape. You can see swimming cheetahs, lions, and even hyenas fully acclimated to the conditions that surround them. Nothing is scarier than knowing Beautiful. that a cheetah can swim after you. Finally, at Dude, the latter they, they months of the year, Ogavango dries up again, and about 60% of well. Of it is absorbed by plants, over 30% is evaporated, and the rest is either transpired into underground aquifers or drained into Lake Nyami. Now, granted, Botswana is dealing heavily with drought and desertification in their country and is trying to combat it with legislative action. To the east, you have the even stranger Makadigadi and Sua Pans, which are two large salt basins, just like Salar de Uyuni that we learned two episodes ago. Remember? Remember? This area used to be a lake that eventually dried <laughs> up and is actually the this site of Botswana's funnier. largest salt and sodium I don't know why carbonate that's funny, mines. But if you look funny. closely, you can even see the mines close to the eastern edge of the basin. No, those green rectangles are not crop fields. Those are actually well fields and solar evaporation ponds filled with water that are used to process and calcify the minerals in the mines. Speaking of oh, mines, sir. since the 1980s, Botswana has actually been the world's largest producer of gem diamonds. Five diamond mines have opened up since independence, and the world's richest diamond mine is found in Juaneng. The diamond industry has actually played a huge role in the past, and in today in the development of the economy and people's lives. Now let's hmm. talk about that. That should be very interesting. Botswana is kind of like the place that you would be proud of if it was your little adopted African son. Unless if you were African. Well, I mean, Africans can adopt Africans too. But you would be proud of it if it was your son. First of all, Botswana has just a little bit over 2 million people, the majority of whom, about 80%, identify as ethnically Tswana, which is also where Botswana gets its name from. Bo so it's like. Wait, they they said it was like the size of France, right? That wasn't the last one, right? Uh, I forget things like immediately after they happen. Okay, so I'm just trying to get a grasp of the population density. And, and uh, it's actually uh, kind of on the lower side, it seems. Botswana. Other minority groups include the Kalanga, the Basarwa, the Kagalagadi, and a small percentage of the population is also white, mostly descendants from former English and European settlers right. during the Didn't colonial days. Actually, recently, there's been a huge influx of white people moving into Botswana from neighboring Zimbabwe, as the president, Robert Mugabe, if you could even call him a president, much less a three-decade-long dictator, has instituted laws that actively discriminate and oppress the white minority, unless if you are, like, super talented like Christy Coventry, who won seven Olympic medals, including two golds for Zimbabwe in the 2004 get Olympics. And Mugabe called her a daughter of Zimbabwe and gave her $100,000. Oh, sorry, uh, back to Botswana. Essentially, pretty much everybody in the country speaks English. The Tswana people might speak Tswana or Setswana. And many of the white people might speak Afrikaans as well as a second language. For those who don't know, by the way, Afrikaans is kind of like an Africanized Dutch. Long story short, Botswana mm. used to be part of the British Empire under the name of Betuana. They have an Afrikaans 
course at my school. Um, it looks very interesting. They they have like a not, not just a course. They have like a whole degree program for Afrikaans, which I thought was very interesting. Given like there's so many languages one can provide, it's kind of interesting that they uh, they offer that. Wanna land? Okay, let's just get it over with and get the pun out because I know you'll go crazy if I don't. Bet you wanna land in Betchwana land. There, are you happy now? Moving on. The interesting Kinda. thing though is that Botswana actually has very fascinating tribal groups found along the rural areas of the country. One of the most sought after people groups for studies by sociologists would have to be the San Bushmen found in the northern regions by the Okavango Delta. So the San Bushmen people speak a Khoisan language, which is saturated with these unique click sounds. Many dialects can oh. even have up to 48 different click consonant sounds. The that is very I cool. Um, I've heard of like the uh, clicking languages in some uh, African nations. Uh, I've never actually heard them spoken by actual people from those places. Uh, I've heard some pretty unfortunate jokes made around such languages that result in people making the little clicky noises but i don't know if i've ever heard the genuine thing so that's a first for me i think operates in a democratic parliamentary republic with a president as a head of state in fact according to transparency international botswana actually has the least corrupt government in all of africa on par with countries like portugal and south korea culturally botswana identifies closely with other countries in the south african region about 70 percent of the people identify as christian and regular church attendance is actually pretty high the rest are either non-religious or ascribed to folk religions essentially though botswana used to be one of the poorest countries but today has developed a steady economy and infrastructure that has made it into the fourth largest gdp in all of africa on i mean africa is one of those regions of the world that is growing faster than a lot of the others uh it does come from uh being in a pretty large deficit uh largely because of colonialism but africa's uh in general like developing so quickly uh because of the importation of technology from the world around them, they're able to like skip stages of technological development that other countries went through and move into like slightly more uh, modern technological development uh, much faster than other countries did, which uh, makes a huge difference with a lot of these African nations par with countries like Mexico and Turkey. This is partially thanks to the mining industry, but also to the new financial sector that Botswana is heavily investing in. With strong fiscal policies and free market enterprises, Botswana was able to nab over 7 billion in foreign exchange reserves just about 10 years ago. Today, Botswana has Africa's highest credit rating, and with a well-capitalized system which allows high interest rates, Botswana seems to be doing something incredibly right. I'm coming for you, Switzerland! Wow, Botswana, looks like you've stepped into the international limelight. Now let's see how that's going for you. Oh, the friend zone. Uh, my now, when it comes to friends, favorite? Botswana kind of has like this weird seesaw effect in which they like groups of people that typically don't like each other. First off, we have Russia and the US. The US is not only a huge partner with multiple embassies and consulates for each side, but so far is also the largest provider of aid and medical relief, and especially in the HIV and AIDS division amongst the residents. Peace yeah. Corps professionals consistently stop by and even help build facilities as well as develop and train native Botswanans to tackle the issue. Nonetheless, Russia is actually seen as a little bit more favorable to the Botswanans. Russia swooped right in shortly after independence and was one of the first countries to acknowledge Botswana as a nation, just like they did with Angola and Benin. Yeah, they were very seeing a pattern quick to going do on such. here. They hit it off really well early in the game. Russia maintains numerous trade policies and educational cooperation agreements with them, and to this day, each side has embassies and consulates. Botswana was kind of seen by Russia as like a potential breeding ground for communist ideologies. However, unlike Angola and Benin, the whole thing never really kicked off, and eventually they became a democratic republic. But still maintain Sick. good relations and to this day Botswana is one of the countries that Russians do not require a visa to enter. Then you have Israel and Pakistan. Pakistan has been a favored business partner and has built ties with Botswana for years and even has overseas embassies in Beijing and Yemen for each other. However, Israel also has cooperation agreements and invests heavily in the irrigation sector to help Botswana fight its desertification problem by suggesting models that have worked for their own country. Israel is also facilitating the development of the Botswana International University of Science and Technology. Finally, you have what Botswana would consider their best friends, Namibia and South Africa. South These Africa. three countries. South Africa.
one of the best flags of the whole planet. Fight me. <laughs> We're way back. First, South Africa used to have some drama with Botswana, but today is really close and has signed numerous agreements in tax, agriculture, health, transport, and more. A huge portion of the Botswanan economy is dependent on South Africa, and culturally, they resonate pretty close as they were both parts of the British Empire. Namibia, yeah, though, is sense. really close to Botswana, too. But remember, Namibia kind of broke away and became independent from South Africa. So here we have a country and another country that used to be part of that country being friends with this country. It's kind of like going to a party and realizing your ex wife is there. Nah, but relations between South Africa and Namibia are fine. Soon after Namibia's well, independence, good. Botswana was one of the first countries to shake hands and sign treaties. The only issue is that Namibia once scared the crap out of Botswana because they almost planned on deferring the water from the Okavango River away from the basin to help irrigate their land, which would destroy the whole delta. Luckily, the plans were diverted. In conclusion, Botswana is like the little African country that accidentally got blessed and then ran with it. Stay tuned, Brazil is coming oh, up next. Oh, Brazil. Hey, so it's like 2 a.m. and I'm about to upload this video. But before I do, I just want to say thank you so much to my friend Jason. He's the one who did most of the motion graphics in this video, which is why so much of it looks so amazing and so much yeah. better than the other episodes. Because movement. Thank you so much, Jason. If you guys want to check out his uh, reel, his motion graphics reel, I'll put a link in the description. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I love you, bro. Have a good one. So learning about African nations, I think, is really interesting with how quickly a lot of them are developing and changing. Uh, I'd imagine a lot of the uh, videos here, which are years old at this point, like how old is this one? Let me check. Um, this one was from July 18th, 2015. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's on kind of the older side. Uh, we're still not getting into like a lot of the newer stuff. So by now, a lot of these countries have already probably gone through so much change. Uh, and some of these videos may have some dated stuff to them. And I kind of acknowledge that. But in the grand scheme, I think this has been a wonderful series to give me to, to just dip my toe in... Uh, in the water of uh, international geography and all that 